Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. How many times have you run into a situation where you got your digital camera, you took a bunch of pictures, and you don't remember whether you copied them to your laptop or your desktop, and then you edited some of them before you uploaded them to Facebook, but you don't remember where those ones, and you're not sure if you still have the original files? Data management can be very, very complicated, especially as your household grows and as you add more and more systems and more and more devices to your network. So Windows Home Server is apparently represented by this guy who is the digital family. Uh, Windows Home Server is what I would consider to be the ultimate solution to managing your data, protecting your data, and overall simplifying your digital life. Today's episode is going to show you what I would consider to be an ultimate Windows Home Server build, although we are going to give you some tips along the way where you could save a buck here and there by doing things a little bit more, uh, more consumer, like not using a server board, for example. Before we get into the hardware, the benefits of a home server are many. So I'm just gonna go down the list here. Automatic daily backups of all your network PCs. This has saved my bacon a number of times already with my Windows home server, which I've been using for a few years now. Easy centralized PC maintenance. This is great because it'll notify you if a PC hasn't been backed up in a while, if your antivirus is up to date, or if there are any other critical problems with a PC on your network. Streaming of media files across your network, so yes, all of your storage is now centralized in one place, which means everyone has access to it, or only certain people have access to it. You can also manage who has access to which files and folders on a user-by-user -user basis. Remote online access to files and home-based PCs. This one is huge. You forgot a file at home, you got to print it out at school, log into your Windows home server, it's a web-based GUI, you download the file, you print it at school, all of a sudden, what was a huge disaster a number of years ago is now easy with a Windows home server. And then access to your home-based PCs is awesome too. Instead of having to completely open up all of your different home-based PCs on different ports to the internet, you can just funnel them all through the Windows home server, which will then connect you to whichever PC you need to access, although it should be noted you need Windows 7 Professional or Ultimate in order to enable that functionality. It is extendable with add-ins and third-party apps, and I have personally used a number of them. A lot of them are very, very useful and add cool functionality to the Windows home server. The hardware for my ultimate machine might seem a little bit excessive to most people, but I assure you there's a good reason for all the choices that I've made here, although I'll show you how to save a couple bucks. So we've got the Fractal Design Array R2 Mini ITX case. The reason I went with this one is due to its incredibly compact form factor and its ability to hold seven drives, six three and a half inch storage drives, as well as one two and a half inch drive for the OS unrivaled in this small of a space, plus it's reasonably quiet, so if you have somewhere that you have to put it where you might have to listen to it, it's not gonna be a problem, and it's also very aesthetically pleasing, very plain looking, you'll see once we open it up. For the actual storage drives themselves, we've gone with Seagate Barracuda three terabyte drives. These are their new Power of One campaign drives. That means that they have one terabyte platters. These are 7200 RPM drives because Seagate no longer believes in lower RPM drives with power saving features. One of the drawbacks of those power saving features is that it can sometimes cause the drive to be no longer detected in a RAID array. So we've gone with these drives so that our, well, our RAID array will be 100% stable and we're not going to lose our drives. We've got the Windows Home Server software itself. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have six of those three terabyte drives, so this is going to be one massive Windows Home Server. I also have a hardware RAID card from Adaptech. So this is a fairly low-end hardware RAID card. It's somewhere in the $250 to $300 range. Personally, I would much rather use hardware RAID than software RAID, especially with Windows Home Server 11, whereas Windows Home Server version 1, it was less important. What this means that if, is that if you have a failure in any other part of your system, such as a motherboard, you're not tied to that particular motherboard. You can easily recover your data by moving the whole RAID array somewhere else. So that is... Uh, better security basically and more reliability rather than relying on onboard controllers. Next, and this one I'm going to admit is a bit excessive but I had to admit I was intrigued, Intel has a micro mini ITX server board 
as well as a matching low power Xeon CPU. So this is an 1155 platform with, that supports up to eight gigs of memory and it also has a PCI Express 16X slot. So that is where we're going to install that Adaptec RAID card. Finally, we have our memory. For memory, I've gone with the stable choice, that is Kingston. Although we are using HyperX memory, I don't expect there to be any issues, although I'll let you guys know during the build process if there are. Kingston is, I mean, reliability is awesome. Take it from a retailer, we don't get a lot of it back. Let's just say that. And last but not least, for my OS drive, I will be using an Intel SSD. An SSD may seem like a strange choice for a storage server, but due to the additional strain that is placed on storage servers, because you're constantly reading and writing a lot of data to them, you can run into issues where drives will die more frequently, especially if they're not enterprise grade drives. To avoid this, and I've personally had my OS drive on my Windows home server die a couple of times, it is fairly inconvenient. To avoid this, I long ago switched to using an SSD for my boot drive to get better reliability, better stability, and lower power consumption whenever the mechanical drives are not being used. Now we're almost finished the building process. You can see we've got our motherboard installed, we've got our RAID card installed, power supply, CPU heatsink, memory, and I wanna show you guys the storage configuration before we close it up. So here I have my <laughs> six three terabyte hard drives as well as my boot SSD strapped to the bottom of the cage. So before we lower the cage in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this SATA cable to the SSD. That one's gonna run so we're booting off the chipset. So that'll be the default boot device. Next, we are going to plug six of our eight breakout cables into the six hard drives. And then you can see here we have six SATA power, one SATA power, so that goes to our SSD, and then we have an additional Mol Molex connector just in case there's some supplementary hardware that we want to install. Now, just so you guys know, the Array R2 is designed for a low profile, longer card like this one to basically fit just under the drive cage. If you wanted to install a video card or something that is a full height card though, it would have to be pretty short to avoid and interfering with the drives, you pretty much don't want to put a video card in here. It doesn't even have a PCIe connector on the power supply. So the build is pretty much complete. There's a lot of smart things about this case that are going to make this a more ideal home server than pretty much any other ITX case. One is the 140 millimeter fan in the front. That is going to do a quiet job of cooling these six hard drives and the rest of the hardware in here. For exhaust, we've just got the small fan on the power supply, which means we're gonna have positive air pressure in here, which is better for not accumulating dust. The next thing is the fact that all of these hard drives are isolated by rubber mounts. So there are rubber mounts between the entire cage and the aluminum of the case. There are rubber mounts between the drives and the aluminum of the cage here. And finally, there is a rubber noise isolating piece on the top panel before I close it that will isolate the drives as well. And there's the fact that it is contained within a simply phenomenal form factor. It did take some squeezing for Slick and I to get this machine built, but it is as built as an Array R2 pretty much can be. So for our last step today, we're just going to show you guys how to install Windows Home Server, but I think we are pretty much done with our ultimate home server build. Now guys, I have to confess, earlier on in the configuration, I did make a mistake. We have swapped out the Adaptec card with an LSI card that costs a little bit more. This is a 9248i. This one, unlike the other one, supports RAID 5. So while you could run software RAID, or you could run RAID 10 or whatever else, this is my ultimate dream home server configuration, so I wanted to go with Hardware RAID 5 so we could take advantage of the speed advantage that Hardware RAID 5 provides, as well as the additional reliability and additional capacity that you get with RAID 5 over something like RAID 10. So in summary, few changes you could make. This is a great little server for home or small business or whatever else you wanna use it for to manage your data, but not everyone needs as an extravagant a home server. You could use consumer level hardware instead of a server board and a Xeon. And consumer level hardware might come with more SATA ports. So instead of adding a RAID controller, you could just use the onboard SATA. 
Alternately, you could even beef it up a little bit more. So instead of using you know, a low power Xeon, you could use a higher end Intel Core i7, if you're using consumer stuff. You could also add enterprise level drives for additional reliability, but this is sort of my dream within reason that I could actually potentially buy and that hopefully you guys, if you need storage, would potentially consider because I think it's a pretty darn good config. I think that pretty much wraps it up. There's one thing that you might have noticed in front of me here, and this is one tip I want to give you guys before we uh, move on to the software episode, and that is how to actually install the OS on a system with no optical drive. This particular Intel board didn't accept this solution, but one solution is to use a USB adapter to an external, just or rather an internal drive, or a USB external drive, this motherboard didn't really like that, so there's a couple other solutions. You can burn your ISO to a USB, to a bootable USB, or you can go with the ghetto solution, which is the one we did, and run an internal cable, keeping your case open, and a regular internal optical drive. So those are your three options. We're going to go ahead and do that. Thank you for checking out our hardware configuration guide for the Ultimate Windows Home Server. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe for our software guide to Windows Home Server.